What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again, and this time we are here with Jeffrey of Rogue. Thanks for being here today, man. It's great to have you here. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and great move, by the way, making the album artwork of uh, the background in this. I think a lot of bands should follow <laughs> suit. That's like some great promotion right there. I thought so. We we did one more of these uh, a few weeks ago, and I was like, that's a little better than my background uh of my apartment <laughs> yeah no it's actually a really cool thing i think that should be a new merch line like uh album artwork uh green screens or something like that <laughs> yeah it's not bad you might be onto something but uh thanks for doing this interview today and thanks for giving us some new music we have the phantom ep out now which came out this uh, past october being that this is an ep is this maybe like a good representation of like the direction that rogue is going into for a full-length album or is this sort of like a one-off ep to kind of stand out a little bit no, it's definitely indicative of where we're going. Um, we've released only EPs thus far. Um, and what we were originally trying to do before the pandemic actually is our previous EP, Eon. And this new record were intended to be a full length. Then a pandemic happened and we started having a desire to kind of change the musical direction and everything. So it just made a lot more sense to end up splitting it into two EPs conceptually. Um, but I can pretty confidently say that we're not going to be back with new music until it's a full length. Okay. Uh, so this was almost kind of like a happy accident in a way. Do you think that like having the Eon EP and this Phantom EP that like maybe splitting them up, maybe altered the context of the album or kind of like changed the overall vibe or maybe uh, uh, gave the album a different type of life than what you expected it if they were just together on a full length? No, absolutely. And I think that's what kind of goes missed with a lot of like outside viewers is the fact that this record has much darker tonality and it's less guitar driven and much more song driven and more personal and introspective in the lyrics. I don't think that would have happened if it was all done at the same time. When we started doing the Eon, it was very riff driven, very just like, <laughs> I hate to say a North Lane ripoff, but it was very typical of like old North Lane. And by the time we got to this record, you know, through a year through a pandemic, it was just a completely different vibe. So, I mean, songs like Phantom and Jackal wouldn't have existed otherwise. It would have been really different and probably not as dynamic. Okay. Well, I mean, I think because when you guys have kind of in a way like been marketed as sort of like a progressive like metalcore band. So I like hearing mm -hmm. upon Rogue hearing that I thought, oh, maybe they were kind of like a little bit of between the barrier to me or the contortionist or something like that. But then listening to the Phantom EP and seeing how all of your song, none of your songs are like 11 and a half minutes. I definitely think <laughs> that it is more of a song driven album than like, you know, mm -hmm. um, spending, you know, 75% uh, of the song just soloing and riffing, you know. No, absolutely. And it's funny because those are two of my biggest inspirations. Absolutely. Like both of those bands did live streams and stuff like that through the pandemic. And I have posters in my bedroom from the Colors live stream anniversary and things like that. But yeah, this record was definitely like me and our producer taking a step back. And it's like, okay, like we did all of the riffs. We have done many riffs thus far. Like it kind of allowed Jansen, the singer, to have a little more room to shine a little more room to tell his story yeah well there is also though like you said there are differences between the eon ep and the phantom ep and you said that the phantom ep is a good representation of the direction rogue is going into but is there going to be like maybe more experimentation for the full length album i know i'm kind of like asking that a little far in advance <laughs> but i think so because it's for me as a songwriter or even a guitarist it's pretty daunting to think of like writing a full length because the number one thing comes to mind for me is how do i make it exciting to listen throughout without becoming monotonous so like the number one thing i would think of is okay well if there's one song that's very riff driven then we need to write a song that is not riff driven if there's one that's very ambient then maybe we can write you know the antithesis of that so in that i don't know if that's the best formula you know to write a full length with but just kind of naturally with that i would think of how can we write enough you know more dynamic songs to keep it an exciting journey throughout so that's where i really think it would you know become one of the deeper tracks 
one of the later tracks would be something that people haven't heard from us before. Mm-hmm. Now, it does it because it seems like you you all very much know what you're doing with Rogue. I mean, just from listening to the album, you definitely know what you're doing. And from just talking to you the last five minutes, like I could tell that, you know, you're very pinpoint, you have an idea, but is there maybe like a lot of room for improvising like during the songwriting process? I think so. And I think that that probably comes more so from Jansen than from me. I'm like a very traditional structured, not even just guitarist, but person. I'm very routine very I wear my influences on my sleeve I guess I should say it's no secret I mean you literally brought up between the buried and me and the contortionists and like those are bands I've been listening to since I was in like sixth grade you know um whereas he has a lot more life experience a lot more broader musical taste so me being in a progressive metal band is just like it was just something that was kind of written in stone from, you know, me listening to music like that when I was eight, nine, ten years old, whereas he listens to so many different types of acts and has gone from when we started, North Lane was like the biggest inspiration for why he wanted to start a band. And now when we went into Phantom, he was like progressively wanting to do more and more and more singing and less screaming. Not that we will ever get rid of screaming completely, but that's a direction that he keeps wanting to go in. So when it's all of those different forces clashing, there has to be some kind of compromise somewhere. Yeah, definitely. Uh, singing, uh, just tell him that he's selling out. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> but because I, I, I was able to tell that there is sort of like a contrasting sound. Do you have like every band, I don't care if it's prog metal, I don't care if it's hardcore, I don't care if it's butt rock. Like there's always like that one member who's just like the theory freak and like is very technically driven. Is that you in Rogue? It's probably me, a little bit our producer as well. Because we really feed off of each other. Our producer, his name is Jonathan. I've been working with him for like seven or eight years at this point. So me and him really feed off of each other on the musical end of things. Whereas Jansen's just like, yeah, I can sing. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he has a background in drumming too. So a lot of the like more rhythmic elements of Rogue and the kind of polyrhythms or offbeat things, that really comes from him too. So it really all complements each other. Yeah. Now we've referenced prog metal a couple of times and I love having this debate because like I've heard prog metal almost kind of like the word prog has been kind of like used very, very liberally to describe many different bands. Like Opeth is considered yeah. prog. Mm-hmm. Between the Barrett and Me is considered prog. Like you have bands like Yes that are considered prog and those three bands sound nothing like each other. And then you get to Porcupine Tree and Neo Bliviscaris and go even further down the rabbit hole. To you, is there like a certain element that all prog bands have to have aside from, and you just proved that the songs don't have to be a half hour long. So like, uh, um, yeah. like, do you think, what do you think makes, comes into the music that makes a band classified as prog? I think it's really the blending of genres personally, or even it's kind of hard to pinpoint when you say that I think it would be just the mindset towards the music and just trying to be forward thinking. And that's where I kind of think that we've gotten where, I mean, it's kind of inaccurate to say that we were a progressive metal band at the point that we were just writing songs because we like North Lane and Invent Animate. That's, that's just metalcore at that point. But now we're getting to the point of like, we are wanting to, maybe write more personal lyrics than those metalcore bands. Maybe we're trying to put more ambiance, more singing, you know, more exterior influences from the genre into what we're doing. And I think that's what you start to really see with bands like that. You know, Dream Theater is one of those like big prog rock, prog metal bands for me. It's like every single Dream Theater record or even between the Barry to Me record has that one song or one part where it's, like all of a sudden between the buried and me has a bluegrass breakdown or dream theater still will do like the eighties ballads amidst, you know, John Petrucci just shredding and Jordan Rudis joining him. So it's like, it's always having that like exterior influence for sometimes I think it's like bands guilty pleasures. Like, Hey, I know this is what we're known for and this is what's going to go over with the fans, but this is also what we enjoy doing. So we're still going to keep, putting some of those influences in there as well. Mm-hmm. Do you ever listen to the band uh, Ghost Iris? 
I haven't actually. I've heard about them. Their latest quite a album. Lot I think you would love that. I think that would be your album of the year if you checked it out. From what you're telling me. Really? Yep. Ghost Iris. The album's called Comatose. I'm gonna have to check that out. Yeah. yeah like, 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 like drop, drop everything. Name thrown around a little bit. Yeah. After this interview, just drop everything and listen to that album. Cancel your other <laughs> interviews after this. Uh, but um, and you mentioned though, like it's the blending of genres, but like metalcore is also the blending of genres, and then you have like uh, post-hardcore that blends different genres. I mean, there's a lot of different uh subgenres on the periodic table that uh you know cultivates many <laughs> different styles, folk metal and everything. So it, I think you bring up a good point though. I think Prague has like an emphasis on combining the different genres together. It doesn't try to like mix them together into one sound. It kind of lets all the different elements stand out. Yeah, it really has those, just the different moments in a song, so to speak. It's a good point. It's not like there's a bluegrass guitar riff happening behind screaming and things like that. You just let each section of the song really shine for what it is kind of thing. Being the guitarist and being that Rogue focuses on both melodic and uh, heavy vocals, do you almost like have to adjust your guitar playing or adjust your technique to like fit the vocal style, like uh, some... I think like the prevailing theory is that you have to do more strumming if there's melodic vocals, you have to do more riffs if there's more heavy vocals, like to see your technique yeah. change to fit the vocals. A little bit, honestly. It's funnily enough for me, it's been simplifying, so to speak, or maybe focusing more on complementing the song and what the vocals are doing versus just doing whatever I want. Because my background comes from like I also play in an instrumental band where, I mean, when there's no vocals, I'm really trying to fill the space with all of these different sounds and typically pretty busy guitar work, but it's hard to let the vocal shine in a chorus if the guitar is just all over the place. So that's been probably my biggest lesson. And you can kind of see that as the Rogue Records progress, like the more choruses we've done, like the simpler the guitar work has gotten in the chorus because he has also become a better singer over time and at least in my opinion like come up with better melodies and better progressions and things like that so over time you can kind of see at least for those like grandiose sections the guitar work simplifying while he um, comes up with like some more complex patterns okay and then you know when all of a sudden he takes a step back that's when i get crazy again <laughs> well i'd imagine like because you know a lot of guitar players especially in your genre like to write alone and you know kind of like to be more in isolation and like bring the riffs yeah. in but like when you when you have like a full structure i mean just how much does the vocals come in and just like defy everything thankfully with him he's pretty involved with the songwriting process and Again, you were absolutely spot on there. So I think that that's probably something that's evolved more over time. Whereas in the beginning, it would be, here's the song, good luck. <laughs> Whereas now, I mean, when we write even just like a minute to two minutes of the song, we're like, hey, we're not quite sure where this is going. Um, I'll send it to my producer, he'll send it back to me, and then we'll send it to Jansen and just say like, hey, here's what we've got so far. What do you think so far? Do you see this? going in any specific direction if we're hitting like a roadblock and so all of those little things even though we all live um quite a ways away from each other i think is what's really made the music at least in my opinion mature and get better over time is it has become slightly more collaborative than i'm used to in the past of again exactly like you said just writing a whole record in my room on my laptop and it's just like all right here's the song go crazy yeah well do you can you see maybe you you kind of just answered this but like maybe in the future with rogue that like maybe the music will be like more rather than writing alone on the laptop maybe it will be like all of you coming into a room and just jamming or is that not on the table yet <laughs> see i would love to do that the honest answer that i tell people is typically is just like i would absolutely love to do that but it's some of this music is just honestly a little too difficult for me to do that where it's if you heard a song where we did that it would probably be like the most radio hard rock simplistic guitar you know written song that we've done so far because i mean some of these riffs i genuinely do have to sit down and just drill it in for hours on end to make sure i'm getting it perfectly clean and that may be a cop out <laughs> no it's on my not, end it's, but you know it's 
I mean, that's typically the roadblock you hit is I'm like, I can't write a riff like this where I'm tapping and, you know, using three hands that I don't have in getting it clean in the moment while also like having everybody else here and just constantly building off of like something like that, figuring that out and how to play it and how to come up with the melody or whatever sounds I'm looking for. It just takes a little time that I'm like, uh, maybe you guys can sit this one out. <laughs> well, no, you bring up a good point. I've had this discussion with a couple of people who are like always living in the past being like, um, oh man, m making music is not what it used to be. You know, we used to be jamming in the garage. Like that's the real rock and roll. I'm like, <laughs> dude, like, times have changed and first off there's no doubt in my mind with how with how bands used to be back in the day if people had the technology and the resources to write alone in their bedroom they would have done it back then they they would oh, they're, they're, and they're full of shit if they say otherwise and like for for like there are certain styles where the isolation is the fuel behind the creativity like um uh, i interviewed a uh, tremonti a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. or a couple months ago and uh he like said like not even since the Creed days was I able to write those patterns without without being alone. Like, I needed to be – he said he needed to be alone, and Alter Bridge's music and his solo work is phenomenal. So I think in the end, it really matters just what the final result is. No, absolutely. And like you said, I think it definitely depends on the genre too because, like, I played in an indie band when I was in high school, and that was absolutely a band – where it was like, we all need to be together and we need to understand the vibe of what we're going for. But we're also playing power chords. So there's not that overcoming the physical ability of being able to play the music while you're writing the song. At that point, it's uh, take the drums from a full time to a half time feel power chords. All right. I think we got the vibe here. Yeah. You know, it's very, very different. Yeah, like uh, like if, if there was a hardcore band that was like writing the way you do, I would be like, eh, you kind of are lacking something there. But for your style, I, and you know, from listening to these two EPs, I think it's working in your favor. So maybe maybe like every member, I think you I think you need a European member now, or like a member from like Australia or something, just <laughs> up the isolation even further. Just spread it across the globe, get more influences here. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely. So uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today and for such a great chat. Is there just anything else with Rogue that you would like uh, to promote for the release of the Phantom EP? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, actually, we have been kind of keeping it on the download, but in two days, the instrumental version of the record will be hitting all streaming services. So um, I think we typically do that for all of our releases, but I think this one will be a special one just because of the dynamics of phantom there's less guitar work but there's a lot more for people to hear in the back end of the production and things like that so i definitely hope that people enjoy being able to hear that awesome well thank you so much everybody we are here with rogue check out the phantom ep and check out the eon ep as well go down the rogue rabbit hole we will see you next time on heavy new york